presentamos. everybody. I'm Jim Nance and welcome to our CBS Sports continuing coverage of the 1989 NCAA Championship Tournament. Tonight we conclude the regional semifinals with live doubleheader coverage beginning with Illinois and Louisville in the Midwest. But first, one game already in progress in the East. Second seed Duke already up 13 on Minnesota midway through the first half. But coming up next, it's the fight in the line eye against the Cardinals from the Metrodome as the road to the Final Four continues here on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. Pizza Hut, official corporate sponsor of the NCAA. And by Merrill Lynch, an investment firm built on a tradition of trust. Looking for a great truck or a great truck deal needn't be a challenge. Mazda trucks have been rated the most reliable truck sold in America. The Mazda warranty is the best in the truck business. And right now, you can really clean up. With $750 cash back from Mazda on all our trucks. $750 in cold, hard, wet cash. See your local Mazda dealer today and get $750 cash back on all trucks. Most personal computers are like a two-lane highway, which is fine, until there's so much information... Even From the Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, a facility located just four blocks from the Mississippi River, CBS Sports presents the Midwest Regional Semifinal tonight. The Louisville Cardinals out of the Metro Conference against the Fighting Illini, the Illinois Fighting Illini representing the Big Ten. This is potentially one of the great regional quartets of all time. The winner of this first game goes on to take on either Missouri or Syracuse on CBS on Sunday afternoon. We expect a crowd of about 33,000 here in the Metrodome this evening. And hello, everybody. I'm Bern Lundquist. Welcome to one of the glamorous matchups of this NCAA tournament, featuring top-seeded Illinois against four-seeded Louisville. But a tough note early on now for the Illini. A decision made just 20 minutes ago, Kenny Battle, their outstanding senior, will not start. This goes back to an injury sustained yesterday afternoon during a one-hour shoot-around. It was raining outside the Metrodome. Rain leaked through, battles slipped, wrenched a knee, tried to go in a shoot-around today. It was decided moments ago that he will play tonight, but he will not start Marcus Liberty, Liberty well. My partner is Tommy Heinsohn tonight. Tommy, how does this injury affect Illinois? Well, it's a big loss for Illinois if he can't be at least close to 100%. He represents the hustle. In fact, they have named an award after him to give it to the second best hustler. Marcus Liberty is a different type of player uh, than this fine rebounder. What he does is go out and play the finesse game. He can hit the outside shot, so it may be a different dimension for Illinois. Illinois is favored, but Louisville comes in with loads of NCAA tournament experience. Right now, let's meet the starting lineups. Here's our public address announcer, Bob Casey. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hubert Rachel Humphrey Metrodome here in Minneapolis for this evening's Midwest Regional Semifinal game between the Louisville Cardinals and the Illinois Fighting Illini. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Louisville, at forward, a 6'8 senior from Laurel, Mississippi, number 21, Kenny Payne. Forward, a 6'6 junior from Chicago, number 25, Nick Anderson. 
Stephen. For Louisville at forward, a 6'7 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 44, Tony Kimbrough. For Illinois at forward, at 6'8 at sophomore, number 30, from Chicago, Marcus Liberty. A 6'9 senior from Savannah, Georgia, number 42, Purvis Ellison. For Illinois at center, number 45, a 6'7 senior from Chicago, Lowell Hamilton. For Louisville at guard, a 6'4 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 3, Keith Williams. For Illinois at guard, a 6'6 junior from Carbondale, Illinois, number 35, Steve Bardo. For Louisville at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Bay City, Texas, number 23, from Frankfurt Smith. For Illinois at guard, a 6'4 junior from Madison, Illinois, number 13, Kendall Dill. And the head coaches in his 18th season as head coach of the Cardinals, Denny Crum. In his 15th season as head coach of the Illini, Lou Henson. Louisville comes in 24 and 8, the Illini 29 and 4. We've got the tip coming up right after this. If you like a challenge, just try to find a better deal than Mazda 323. It's $1,600 less than Toyota Corolla. Its warranty covers you 14,000 miles longer than Nissan's, Hondas, or Toyotas. 323 also has their small sedans covered when it comes to overall room. And right now, it comes with $400 cash back from Mazda. $400! That's the kicker. See your local Mazda dealer today and get $400 cash back on 323. The world has become a global marketplace. Last year, Merrill Lynch helped corporations and governments raise $230 billion for building industries and creating opportunities. We're proud to have inspired that much trust. Merrill Lynch, a tradition of trust. Cardinals have made the trek up to Minneapolis where they meet this Illinois team for only the second time in the tournament thus far. They did away with the state of Arkansas. Arkansas Little Rock by five in the first round. And Nolan Richardson's team 93-84 in the second round. The Illini played their first round games in Indianapolis. They ousted McNeese State by six and then came back off to top Rick Majerus's Ball State team 72-60. Our officiating crew tonight, Dick Paparo from Syracuse, New York. Tim Higgins from Ramsey, New Jersey, and Donnie Gray from Fort Washington, Maryland. The alternate is Bob Barnett. Right side, Kenny Payne, Ellison underneath. Ball will be out of bounds. And Louisville to inbounds. Louisville has got to really control the defensive board. That's Denny Crum's main objective. We've got to control the defensive board. And Illinois is going to really have to control both boards. And battle is a very big part of Lost that situation. The ball. And there's the Sports Illustrated contingent, which is on hand, ducking out of the way in some embarrassment. Bradford Smith, Keith Williams, Tony Kimbrough, who's been in a big shooting slump of late. This is expected to be a fast-paced, up-tempo game, press against press. S slapped out of bounds, Marcus Liberty. Duke leading Minnesota 33-21. Now it's 35-21, first half. Bradford Smith will inbound for Louisville. Kenny Payne, entry pass, Purvis Ellison. Got it.
17-10 to go. First half of play just underway. Here's Illinois from the baseline. Kendall Gill with two. Oh, Gill is their style player. He's the guy that's got to hit the outside shot. Once he establishes that and the defense of Louisville, Louisville gets pulled out, that allows the smaller, quicker people of Illinois to get to the ball. Off the hands of LeBradford Smith, taken by the Illini. Illinois, great hands on defense. Pressure all over the place. That shot rims in. Marcus Liberty. Well, there's Liberty. He's the biggest player on the Illinois squad. At the other end, Keith Williams counters for Louisville. Boy, Tommy, it's got to be good news that Liberty scored that first basket because in the tournament, he was 0 for 7 in the first game and didn't shoot in the second. Nice soft touch. A good pass from Liberty, who took it to the hoop, has all those outside skills and also can pass. The pressure defense of Illinois is one of the best in the country. 6-4, Illinois with an early lead. Kenny Payne. Kimbrough, way off the mark. He's only shooting 34% in the last 12 games. And a foul in the backcourt. That's on Purvis Ellison. That looks like the right knee. Purvis Ellison went down, missed two games with a knee injury, ligaments. We're going to see right now a little pick being set, and Ellison tries to turn to the hoop and twists his knee in the process, goes right down quickly after setting that pick. Now, he had an earlier injury with a knee and the strained ligaments, and he missed two ball games with it. They may, they won both of those ball games, but after that, they really went into a slump. Here it is from another angle, sets the pick, and then just kind of twists and goes down. Right away, he felt the pain. It was the left knee that was hyperextended in that loss to Ohio State. They were, uh, they had won 14 in a row and then were defeated by Jay Burson in Ohio State. Ellison was out for two games and came back. But uh, as Denny Crum said, the team was out of sync. And here is the young man who won the MVP of the championship game his freshman year. Well, what they're counting on him is to give them shot blocking against this much smaller front line of Illinois. Should he not be able to play, they're going to miss, also miss an awful lot of those points tonight because they were counting on utilizing him very much in their offense close to the hoop. Uh, his backup is Felton Spencer, a seven-foot junior, who's had a decent year but doesn't uh, possess nearly the same amount of athletic talent that Purvis Ellison has. Well, he's going to sit down, and Felton Spencer will take his place. Mark the time, 17.44 to go in the first half when Ellison goes out with a right knee injury. Well, two big players, one for each team down with knee injuries, one yesterday, one the early part of this game. Kendall Gill, who missed 12 games with a stress fracture late in the season. That shot no good by Hamilton, followed by Liberty, no. And a foul battling for the boards. They are so active. And Hamilton is down also. Dickie Paparo dealing with Lowell Hamilton, who went down fighting for that rebound. Hamilton, a senior out of Chicago, might have caught an elbow in the face. Let's take a peek and see if we can catch it. Comes down. Here it comes. It's his ankle right away, and it looks like his left ankle. So Ellison out, the senior with a knee injury. That's his right ankle. And Hamilton out uh, with his a, right ankle. Vern, this is a brand new floor that they've just brought in, freshly painted, minted for the occasion. 
And uh, I'm not saying that this floor has caused these problems, but it certainly makes you stop and think where there are twists involved. I don't know if he stepped on somebody's foot, but it certainly didn't look like Ellison stepped on anybody's foot. It looked like that foot just didn't slide along the floor. Ellison out. Hamilton out within 18 seconds. It's a 6-4 Illinois lead. There's the first turnover for Louisville. Steve Bardo, two more. I'll tell you, this Illinois team is as good a press team as you're going to find in the country. The only part they don't have is a shot blocker close to the hoop if you beat them. But boy, did they get out and get on you. Keith Williams, Gill guards him. Spencer asks for the ball, gets it, goes up, blocked. Kimbrough, this is Kenny Payne for three, no. Keith Williams chases it down for the Cardinals. LeBradford Smith is coming off a terrific game against Arkansas. The entry pass goes to Payne, who misses. Kimbrough gets two. Uh, Kimbrough is no slight rebounder himself. He's got a wide body, and he better use it tonight. And they hope to get by this very spunky Illinois team. Kendall Gill charging blocking foul on Felton Spencer. Illinois handles the press very well, and they're going to have to also handle it very well because Louisville is one of the better press teams also. But they have Felton Spencer, and they had hoped to have Purvis Ellison as the shot blocker to protect against any kind of penetration after you beat the trap part of the pressure defense. Non-shooting foul, Gill will inbound. Word from the Louisville bench is that Curtis Ellison will be able to return. Good news for Cardinal fans. Gill drives through the pick, and the foul is on Spencer. That's two, and that's the last thing in the world they need, Tom. Without him there, they are in serious trouble. I felt Felton Spencer is not one of the gifted people that knows how to move his feet. And this is going to be pretty interesting. Now, substitution for Louisville. Cornelius Holden, a freshman out of Los Angeles, California, replaces Felton Spencer. So that height advantage, which was so distinct for Louisville, is dissipated. Irvin Small gets two. Well, the shot blockers of Louisville out of the game by injury and personal fouls. Cornelius Holden. Williams not a good outside shooter. Kenny Payne is a good shooter from anywhere, and he gets two. Uh, Kenny Payne is 6'8", but there's the Louisville press coming back into play. LeBradford Smith misses. Long rebound comes down for the Illini. If there was one advantage thought to be that of Louisville's, it was height. And it's disappeared now with Ellison and Spencer both on the bench. Along the baseline. Kendall Gill, lob pass, Nick Anderson. He's fouled by Smith. Now, Louisville is not used to playing with pure quickness. Illinois is. They know how to utilize all their smaller but board banging big people inside. The 6'7, the 6'6s are used to going in there muscling with big people. Seven footers, 6'10. Now Louisville has to counter with much smaller people, and they're not used to it. Third team foul on Louisville. There's the turnover. Here's Smith on the run. And Kendall Gill from behind. What a defensive play by Kendall Gill. Illinois' Nick Anderson. It's 12-8. There is a ferocious player, Nick Anderson. <laughs> He loves this style of play. Tony Kimbrough fighting those shooting problems in the last half of the season. Passes on the shot. Well, this game looks like it's going to be in the hands of this man with the ball right now, Payne, who's got a pro stroke. Purvis Ellison getting ready to come back in as Payne's two cuts the lead to two. 14-49 to go first half. And the good news for Louisville fans, Ellison's back. Mercedes-Benz 560 SL Coupe Roadster. Is it the car you wanted above all others because of its mighty V8 power? Or its blend of quick reflexes and sumptuous comfort? Or its incredible workmanship and finish? 
Only one thing is certain. You will have the driving experience of your life finding out. Dear Rayovac, I've had a battery-operated back scratcher in the drawer for years and years. We had two Rayovac batteries in it. I turned it on, and lo and behold, they were still good. We were really surprised, and so was everyone else. No one believed it until we showed them that they still worked. How's that for good batteries? Sincerely, Mrs. Margaret Bronner, Cincinnati, Ohio. Rayovac. Batteries that turn people on. Topping Supreme Pizza from Pizza Hut. Get one medium for $8.99 or two for just $4 more. Goldie Hawn knows how to motivate a high school football team. Do you know how to get good penetration? Yeah! Kick off with Goldie Hawn in Wildcats Tuesday. Louisville likes to run off plays like this. They'll look long off of rebounds or steals. And normally the speed of LeBradford Smith is more than enough to end up with a layup. But not against this very quick Illinois team who also can shot block from the guard position. That was Kendall Gill with a block. He's the young man who went out for 12 games with a stress fracture, just came back with two games remaining in the regular season. And the Illini are 21-0 and zero with Gill playing. Skip pass, stolen by Ellison. Let's watch and see. He's a little gimpy, Tommy, as he comes up court. Limping noticeably. He's going to try and guts it out. They need his offense. There's Ellison, foul by Irvin Small. That's the third team foul on Illinois. Team fouls are even at three and three. Get set now, man. I want to welcome those of you who've been watching Duke and Minnesota where it's halftime and Duke on top. Our score is 12-10 Illinois. The story here has been injuries early on. Here is Anderson whipping a pass to Kendall Gill and a four-point Illinois lead at 14-10. Ellison went down with a knee injury two and a half minutes into the game. Lowell Hamilton for Illinois out with an ankle injury. Hamilton still on the bench. Ellison is trying to play with that bad right knee. Boy, and Battle didn't start the ball game either. So uh, Illinois undermanned uh, at their big spots. They're only 6'6 six, six and 6'7, six, and those two guys know how to use the, that size to great effect. But Illinois is out in front with a good pressure defense like right here. Nick Anderson brings it up across the timeline after the turnover. That's four Louisville turnover. Shot good. Nick Anderson has really improved as a player. Has extended his range to about 18 feet, so you better go out and get him. Largest lead of the first half. It's now six at 16-10. Gill doing a good job on the Bradford Smith. The freshman, Cornelius Holden. The rebound, Nick Anderson and the outlet pass. Steve Bardo, the quiet member of this flashy Illini crew. Entry pass is good. Marcus Liberty. Liberty has put on some weight, has really extended himself in that low post, and is learning how to really use it to advantage. Illinois thought to have a big advantage in speed, quickness. Louisville, a height advantage, which has almost been negated. Spencer, in Ellison's absence, picked up two quick fouls. He's on the bench. He's the seven-footer. That's Kenny Payne. Adjust the shot beautifully. Well, I'm telling you, that's the man I'd be going to right now. Get him fired up. Uh, they don't seem to be able to defend him. He's been able to face up and also play in a low post so far. Kenny Payne has six. It's 18-12, 12-28 to go, first half. It's Gill, along with that man, Nick Anderson, who is short with the shot and a foul on Ellison. Now, Ellison, twisted knee or not, jumped out there really to give Anderson a, a little hand in the face so he'd have difficulty getting that shot off. Bring up today with significant developments thus far. Louisville hitting 40% and Illinois an outstanding 69%. Illinois has the board edge. Ellison playing with a knee injury. Hamilton on the bench with an ankle injury. And Kenny 
Eddie Battle getting ready to enter the fray now. He slipped on a wet spot in this arena yesterday during the shoot-around, twisted his knee, tried to go this afternoon, and is not at 100%. It was decided not to start it. But I'll tell you, uh, I think that Purvis Ellison not being able to play as has hurt Louisville from a strategy standpoint. They wanted to capitalize on him early in the ball game. And with Battle being out, they were fully prepared to go in another direction before the game started. So the bigger adjustment was really made here by Louisville with Ellison going down. And then Spencer with the two quick fouls. As a result, Cornelius Holden is in the lineup. Here's a reverse layup, Kendall Gill. What a play by Gill. Hits one jumper, gets him leaning, and goes right by him. What speed this Illinois team has. Everick Sullivan in the lineup for Louisville. Foul called underneath. <laughs> Irvin Small picks up the uh, infraction, number 24. Old sleep and eat, they call him. <laughs> Irvin Small. Out uh, there, he's looked like he wanted to eat up Ellison that time. <laughs> That's the most easily understood nickname I think I've heard. That's why they call him that. It's natural. He sleeps after every time he eats. 11.49 to go. Here's Everick Sullivan. He rolled a couple of come from behind wins. Tony Kimbrough, no. Kenny Payne. He went for Sullivan with a pass, and the freshman wasn't ready for it. Well, that's one of the things you got to learn. Once you go up for the shot, everybody thinks you're going to take it, and you're angling for a rebound position. You should take the shot, not make a pass when the guy is low. This defensive unit of Illinois forces an average of 17 turnovers per game. And already Louisville with five, and you saw eight points off turnovers. Very active offense, though. Look at this, and great position by Liberty once again. He gets it. They have him roaming around on the baseline. Much of the season, they've given him the hook, in and out. He's a first-year player for them. They, he set out last season, but he was a much-heralded high school player in the Chicago area. And he has not had a successful run in the NCAA tournament. 0 for 7 from the field before this game. All those seven in the first encounter. Everick Sullivan short. Kendall Gill down the rebound. They send five guys to the defensive boards and still have the speed, the fast break here. Gill. Shot is short. Kimbrough comes up with it for Louisville. Kenny Payne. He's there in Louisville in this ball game. He is the guy. Get him the ball. Purvis Ellison is really not in sync whatsoever. And they've got to find a hot hand. And went to Sullivan, their freshman, a couple of times. Awful lot of pressure to try and make him score. Steve Bardo. Great pass. Kenny Battle. And he will shoot one. 33,000 roaring fans on hand at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Vern Lundquist, Tom Heinsohn, Illinois leading 24-14. 10.05 to go in the first half of play. Ellison playing with a knee injury. Now you're going to see a little inside move, and everybody's watching for the penetration. And a great pass for the layup. And a foul call just across the timeline on Steve Bardo, number 35. Time has been called. The lead is 10. It belongs to Illinois. I don't know too many businesses that can afford not to be competitive. Whatever size you are, that's why I'm here. And why we have a service like Prism Plus. It gives you the same advantage as bigger businesses get, even volume discounts. And it will grow with you. Listen, we know what it's like to go up against a giant. I like to believe I can help my customers go up against their giant, too. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI, let us show you. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it. With Son of a Gun, protect it from STP. If your dash looks dull, shoot it. Your seats are shot, shoot them. Your tires look flat, heck, shoot them too. Don't leave your roof a wreck. Give it some luster. 
give your car high caliber protection with Son of a Gun from STP. Son of a Gun. What a difference. There's something new out there. For all of you, the truck for 89. The all-new Toyota 4x2 Extra Cab SR5. Now available V6 power. Real backseat space. And a new look that can only say one thing. Toyota quality. Got it all now. Toyota! Who could ask for anything more? The Illini, one of the shorter teams in the final 16. Nobody taller on the team than 6'8". That's Marcus Liberty. You got to go back 25 years to find the last NCAA championship team with no man taller than 6'8". That was Don Haskins' UTEP team in 1966. Uh, Lou Hinson knows how to use speed, I'll tell you, particularly on defense. Let's set the lineup now. Here's Steve Bardo. Comes across the timeline. Batted away by now they are prepared and have been preparing to really go at any kind of penetration. That's what Ellison is really good at. But when three people start looking to that penetration, that's what turns the smaller, quicker forwards and centers of Illinois loose on the board. Larry Smith, who came into the lineup during the timeout, number 23 in white. And also, more good news for the Illini, Lowell Hamilton, number 45, who went out with an ankle injury, is back on the court. Illinois, five of nine, and uh, Louisville, two of eight from the field. 24-14, 9.37 to go before halftime. Larry Smith. Knocked out of bounds by LeBradford Smith. Halftime, Duke leads Minnesota 45-30. A lot of folks here in the Metrodome with little tiny portable television sets watching their beloved Golden Gophers go up against Duke. Talk about mixed emotion. Huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota out of the Big Ten. The longest shot, I guess, remaining in the tournament now with a number 11 seed. But uh, running up against a very difficult Duke team tonight. Underneath, Anderson loses control of it on the floor, and Ellison lets it go. Louisville ball. Nick Anderson, the leading scorer on this ball club, one of the Chicago contingent, as Lou Henson has started to mine those playing fields in Chicago for talent. Well, it took him a long time to establish relationships. He was telling us yesterday, visited 400 coaches just to develop a relationship. Sit down and visit, talk, not recruit. Smith has it slip out of his hand. Illinois ball. The Illini lead by 10. There is Lou Henson. Uh, Denny Crum is trying to uh, really get some rest for his backcourt. Well, Bradford Smith took a rest on the bench. Sullivan is now in the backcourt. I don't think that's his natural position, although he's played out there as Keith Williams is residing on the bench for a little bit of a blow. And they want this. Denny saying, let's get up there and really challenge on defense, huh, guys? That's Tim Higgins and Dickie Paparo conferring. I'm talking about the newness of the ball, and that's one of the things that basketball players hate. Go find the ball that's been roughed up a little bit. They put the brand new one back onto the table. Ball's had a tough time of it. It slipped out of sight in the first minute of the game. Well, they held up until they found it, I'll tell you, because uh, the scuffed up balls, players want to play with that to get the feel. Your fingers slide off the leather of new ball. Nick Anderson, two oh. more. He's got eight. Yeah, the old ball worked. <laughs> Lead is 12, 26-14. Illinois is used to playing against much bigger teams, so they're not intimidated by anybody defending them close to the basket that's bigger. At the other end of the court, out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, the freshman, Everick Sullivan. Look at Bardo go by him. Here's Ken Battle. His first two. See that bandage around the right knee of Ken Battle. That's when he slipped in the uh, in the pool of water that came through the roof yesterday. Well, 
Yeah, he looks like he's walking around a little gingerly, too, kind of limping around. Ellison, he's hampered by a bad right knee. And Kenny Payne for two. Boy, is he zeroed in. He leads uh, the Metro Conference in grins, although he's pretty grim right now trying to forge a comeback for Louisville. Kenny Payne, the senior out of Laurel, Mississippi, first man in double figures at 10. 28-18, under eight minutes to go. Battle. Larry Smith, number 23 in white, the man with the ball. Nick Anderson. There's Larry Smith. Allison comes down with a carry. How about the tempo of the game thus far, Tom? Well, it's been uh, not as fast-paced as I thought it would be. I think Louisville has been totally disorganized by that injury to Ellison and never did get a chance to establish what they really wanted to do. Irvin Small with a foul. Kendall Gill getting ready to come back in, and so also is Keith Williams and Felton Spencer. At the conclusion of today's NCAA tournament game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both schools. Kenny Payne is going to get a blow, and uh, LeBradford Smith also joins him as Spencer and Williams come in for Louisville. And there's a botched-up inbounds play. Straight ahead, Battle. Travel. Uh, battle just is not as quick or as he feel that he has the leaping ability. He would have caught that in stride prior to that injury and gone up and cramped it. But was just worried about catching up to the ball. Everick Sullivan. To Williams and Spencer. They go with the Twin Tower set now. Spencer playing with two fouls. And Purvis Ellison at 6'9", playing with that bad right knee and a sore left knee. And look at Kendall Gill. Boy, they come right up underneath the ball. You better not pose with the ball. It's gone. Lowell Hamilton. Kendall Gill is not only a great shooter, but, boy, for a guy his size, he goes out there and harasses. Lead is back to 12. You saw a concern, Denny Crum, Williams, Ellison. And it's out of bounds off of Tony Kimbrough. Don't forget, next here at the Metrodome, Missouri against Syracuse, the number two and three seeds. Most of you around the country will see NC State and Georgetown. Jim Valvano and John, you see what Valvano said yesterday? If he wins tonight, he's going home. No more. Beating Georgetown's enough. <laughs> he's going to take him back down to North Carolina. That'll be it. Those two games are next around the country. I wonder what uh, anybody else has got anything to say about that. <laughs> Anderson. Rebound, Felton Spencer. Ellison. Nice touch. Well, that's what they've been trying to get established for the better part of this half. Get it inside of Ellison or Spencer or Payne. They got Payne into the game, but now they're starting to get Ellison into it. Kendall Gill battles his way through. Spencer with some anger. Great pass to Williams, who's too far into the basket, but gets back as Smith gives him the area. Well, the two big guys, the Twin Towers, starting to pay off offensively and defensively rebounding. Is this a gamble at all by Danny Crum, Tommy? Not right now it isn't. He's got to get back in his ball game to get something established. Spencer again. That's as much fire as they've seen out of Felton Spencer this year. Uh, he's been playing awfully hard all season long. You know, he took ballet lessons to improve his footwork. He's just by nature such a quiet guy, but then Ellison gets two more. And it's a Louisville run that has Henson off the bench. The size is starting to take its toll. A 12-point lead cut in half. Twisted knee and all. Purvis Ellison out there pressing. Purvis, of course, the star of the... NCAA championship win in 86. He said he really wanted one more because he felt that that one, when he was a freshman, was not his team. He'd like to be associated with a championship team as a senior and have it known truly as Ellison's team. What a smart look 
by Krampus Ellison. Took the double team and looked over the defense and found the absolute wide open man. This is an 8 nothing run. And Ellison fights for the rebound. Danny Crumb's decision to insert Spencer and Ellison is paying huge profits. It sure is. And we said the size. This side still has some speed to it. Ellison is pretty quick. That's the ninth turnover. Kendall Gill chases it back. Irvin Small. And there's Spencer with about his fourth rebound in the last five. A dancing pachyderm. Yeah. The Cardinals to within one. It's a TV timeout. series it brings new blood to a class of automobile that can certainly benefit from it there's this dude from the west side they call the wizard who is amazing plays the middle at six four anything a seven footer can do he can do better when he leaps he just keeps going up until all you see is the bottom of his rebox one time the wizard did the nastiest dunk i ever seen went up hit the ball two times on the backboard then slammed back now that takes hang time when the new legends are made they'll be wearing reeboks is where you find it, and the last thing you want to do is slow it down. So come on into Coors Light, a great light beer for a good long time. Right beer now. Tuesday, he saved her life. Was it self-defense? I don't know that. Of course it was self-defense. Tell him! Now his is about to be destroyed. Tour of duty. Crum was hoping that his size would pay off at both ends of the floor. Got a little late getting to her with the injury to Ellison, but there's what he was hoping would happen. Stymie the inside smaller players of uh, Illinois, and also up the other end of the court, it's been paying dividends with Ellison scoring inside off the low post and on, on offensive rebounds. And 11 nothing run in the last three minutes, during which time Louisville has hit 7 of 10. And Illinois has gone unexpectedly cold at 3 of 12. And Ellis has got the knee on his right, the ice pack on his right knee again. An 11 0 run has got a 12 point margin. And Marcus Liberty, as Felton Spencer picks up his third foul. Well, Felton Spencer trying to pick it up. They, Louisville will press, they handle it beautifully. And as Felton backing up, I don't know, that was kind of close. I might have gone the other way. It did go, it's my fault, it did go the other way. It was a charging foul, Tom. So no foul on Spencer. The foul on Marcus Liberty. They and that is the 16, a 16 foul on Illinois. Get in the basket. So Spencer continues playing with two. Kenny Payne back in the uh, lineup for Louisville. Spencer, sixth rebound, but unfortunately, he was on the line, so Illinois gets the ball. Tell you, well, you consider how far Felton Spencer has come from his freshman year. He couldn't hardly move his feet. He's learned what he's supposed to do. Very studious guy. He wants to go to law school if he doesn't make it in the NBA. And he's also, and, and uh, he's one of the best light players on this ball club among the fans and his uh, colleagues. Here's Lowell Hamilton with an unusual shot. Felton Spencer really intimidated him that time into that miss. Keith Williams. 
underneath the Spencer. Three on two. Nick Anderson dishes left. Marcus Liberty gets two more. That's the speed in action with Spencer in there. They don't get back quite as fast. Payne and a quick forward have got to get back much quicker than that. Liberty in double digits with 10. The sophomore out of Chicago. Everick Sullivan penetrates. There's another turnover. That's 11 in the first half now for Louisville. Kendall Gill. This time it is on Felton Spencer. Well, Felton's been going up and down, using his wide body. That time the quickness got in front of him before he could really control the area. Ends up with his third personal. So he's got to go to the bench with 234 remaining in the half, and that will bring Purvis Ellison back in. Denny Crum. He's yelling at Donnie Green, one of the three officials who's on the other side of the court. Changing the score. Uh, I think it really revolves around a correctable error, whether that basket and they called the charge now. Go back to 29 for Louisville. Incorrect score. And it was Louisville. The scoreboard is now correct at 34 29. Kendall Gill, two. On you the line. Must stay with Kendall Gill. But as he get up in the air to get that jumper off. A 6 nothing run now for Illinois. It's 36-29. Illinois is like a bunch of piranhas. You go in the water, and there's a frenzy about your feet. And all of a sudden, you go down, and what's left is bone. On the line, it'll be Louisville ball. This is an Illinois team under Lou Henson. That is a mature team, and they've been together for a long time. Kendall Gill told us yesterday he thinks playing together in this Prairie State League in Chicago helped them a lot. Well, he sure did. He said they played against a lot of pro players, and they found out they had to play much better defense man-to-man, -man, and it also helped them extend uh, to their skill level, the outside game, the shooting, the foul shots. They learned an awful lot this summer playing with some of the pro players like Oakley and Pippen from the Bulls and the Knicks. Very, very important summer for those young players. That foul was on Kendall Gill. You saw we're going back to our studios to give Nance and James Brown at halftime. An 11-0 Louisville run. There's Kendall Gill. Stress fracture of his foot that happened against Georgia Tech. He was out for 12. He's still got a pin in that left foot. And uh, Tolosheski's got a pin in his finger to his left hand. Hey, he's not superstitious. He's still wearing the same shoes he wore the day of the accident. And he was out for... You talked to Lou Henson about why they missed Gill so much. He said what they most missed was the flexibility and defense he gave them. Uh, I, I think that he is such a big player at 6'6", that uh, playing in the backcourt like he does is very important. To match the skills that he produces at that size, the only other guy that they have is a much smaller player. LeBradford Smith gets two. He is 34 of 36 from the free throw line in recent games. He's only missed two of his last 36. And it cuts the lead to five. Lowell Hamilton, nice, strong move. Oh, and look at Hamilton limp down court. Well, he's hurting. Purpose is hurting. And battles sir. Three big guys. Kenny Payne's not. Payne's got 12. Number 21 in red. He is a competitor. Kenny Payne. 38-33. Nick Anderson backs oh. in. What a shot. Oh. Allison with a rebound. Quickly out to Williams. Traveled. That's 12 Louisville turnovers. Now, they were way out of sync, and, and not just this pressure defense really hasn't been doing it to them, I don't think. It's more or less the, the getting thrown out of rhythm without Ellison in there, not knowing who to go to, when to go to them. That's what's caused the, the turnovers more than anything else. Nice pass by Hill. Nick Anderson. No talking on defense. That's 
that's the second foul on Kendall Gill. You're going to see no talking on the defense. There was supposed to be a switch there, but the freshman just did not. Cornelius Holden recognized that that was his man. They didn't talk. LeBradford Smith, the outstanding sophomore from Bay City, Texas, back at the line. Got a couple of sisters who played basketball at the University of Texas. You know what his nickname is? No. Moose. <laughs> you know who gave it to him? <laughs> his grandmother. When he was born, his grandmother asked uh, LeBradford's mother, what are you going to call him? She said, LeBradford. She said, I'm not going to call him LeBradford. LeBradford, what? I'm going to call him Moose. And he's been Moose to the family ever since. Ever since. 44 seconds to go. Larry Smith, number 23. That's Steve Fargo, number 35. Hamilton fights with Ellison for position down low. Louisville ball. Now, Louisville can get out there and harass you as well as anybody. Hanson's going to make a move on his bench now in the final 31 seconds. Largest lead in the first half was 12 at 30 to 18. And then the Cardinals, who were trailing, came back to within one. What a load they're putting on uh, Sullivan right now to lead this ball club at this point. The point guard feed it in as we're coming to the end of the half. How about the move? Well, they all back down for him to go one on one. the baseline no good so what was a 12-point lead is reduced to three at the half that's the end of the half with the score illinois 40 to 37 we'll continue after this message and a word from your local station cbs sports coverage of the ncaa basketball championship is sponsored by the good time great taste of mcdonald's Reebok basketball shoes. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. And by Pontiac, we build excitement. In three of the top seed in the Midwest, the Illinois Illini. 40-37 Illinois at halftime as we bring you back to our broadcast center in New York. Hello once again, everybody. Jim Nance along with my colleague James Brown. Again, a 12-point lead for Illinois is down to three. Meanwhile, at the Meadowlands, Duke and Minnesota. You know, last night we had four thrilling regional semifinals. And finally, we have one regional semifinal that has been thoroughly dominated. I'm talking about the second seed in the East, James, the Duke Blue Devils from the start tonight. America, today's Chevrolet, the industrial tool division of Black & Decker, and by New Michelob Drive from Anheuser-Busch. The Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Louisville, which trailed by 12 at one point, fought back to within one. And now as we get set for the second half, it's 40-37 in Tommy Heinsohn, what was really a very fascinating first half play. Well, the injuries of uh, key players, both before the game and during the game, really changed the complexion of this thing. Louisville never really got a chance to establish what they wanted to do early, which was things like this, get Purvis Ellison in that low post so that he could score, use his size, uh, which he does very nicely here. That didn't happen often enough because of the confusion over the injury. Illinois came back and really did a great job of with that piranha defense stealing the ball and then boy attack attack. You look how quickly they get up there. Good inside passes. Four people up there quickly. Fourth man up the trail against the ball. It's in. They've been doing that all over the first half. Leading scores for the Cardinals. Kenny Payne perfect from the floor. He's six for six. Anderson and Liberty both in double digits with 10 each. Turnovers, and here's a key factor. Louisville has turned it over 12 times already. And I think those 12 turnovers really came more from the fact that there was confusion in what they wanted to do than anything else. They are well-schooled in beating pressure defense. Points off turnovers, though, in favor of Louisville, 12 to 4. And we're set to go as Liberty is back in. Kenny Battle, who suffered the knee injury in warm-ups yesterday, 
played only six minutes in the first half. Purvis Ellison, who went down with a knee injury three minutes into the ball game, his right knee, not the one that was injured in midseason, his right knee, Ellison did play 16 minutes in the first half, and he's in the lineup right now. Illinois' Lowell Hamilton, he was out with an injury for a while, has the shot blocked by Ellison. Keith Williams thinks about going at Gill and then settles back in the half-court offense. Purvis Ellison, after the block, ended up limping up the court. And there's a turnover. Well, loose ball on the floor. And Nick Anderson does come up for it for Illinois. Underneath, Lowell wow. Hamilton has to adjust the shot because oh. of Ellison. Boy, Ellison got a piece of it. But he's just limping up the court. Ellison with the injured right left knee. Underneath, it goes to LeBradford Smith. There's another turnover, and Anderson has it for Illinois. We've played a minute. It's been sloppy in the second half. Well, they're trying to take it to the hoop, and Ellison is making his presence felt. Lowell Hamilton, they got him shoving off. It's on number 45, Hamilton. First team foul of the second half, and that's his second foul of the ball game. Irvin Small, number 24, comes back in. Seven, no scoring in this half. This is an Illinois team that was ousted in the second round last year by Villanova. Well, Bradford Smith, nice move. He's fouled Steve Pardo, number 35. And I was thinking about that Villanova defeat. You and I did that ball game, and they slowed down the tempo on Illinois, and it uh, got them the victory. Well, they really played with a frenzy last year. This year, they've gotten some other aspects of the game to, to help them along, outside shooting and free throws. But uh, the pressure defense was probably the only weapon they had last season. Uh, they, uh, right now, are in a world of trouble if uh, Battle really can't get back there and help. And Hamilton, their uh, ace, very experienced center, is settled on the bench in foul trouble. So now they're going to be on demand with their big people. LeBradford Smith, you can see, is an excellent free throw shooter. Moose. And he's now 5 for 5 today. Moose Smith from Bay City, Texas, the sophomore. And it's 40-39. The Cardinals have fought back to within one once again. They trail by as many as 12 midway through the first half. And another shoving off foul. Nick Anderson got caught, number 25. Trying to really establish himself in that low post, get something going to the hoop, uh, trying to pull Ellison out so he won't shot block. They got him up to the top of the key, but Anderson just a little bit too anxious to get that pass. That's his first foul, second team foul, third team foul of the half on Illinois. Now Smith, Ellison, Williams, Payne, and Kimbrough starting five on the floor for Louisville. 24 and eight. Lob pass, the alley-oop. And it'll be Illinois' ball. Southeast and Midwest Regionals, Virginia Michigan advanced in great games last night. Illinois-Louisville, the winner of this one, plays either Missouri or Syracuse here Sunday afternoon. Boy, did that Glenn Rice have a shooting spree last night? Wasn't that something?